But this is part of the sort of requirement of the job. Was a Brian Wansink would have you believe it's the skill of juggling fruit that landed him the gig of executive director at the United States Department of Agriculture's Center for Nutrition Policy. This is my pyramid. For short, he's the guy that came up with the new food pyramid. My pyramid is a way to very easily communicate to people what the dietary guidelines mean to them on a day-by-day -day basis and a meal-by-meal -meal basis. Growing up in Iowa, Wansing says, was key to success in his career path. This is the place where nutrition centered. We, we grow it, we eat it, it's available. This is a... We spend a lot of time on the farm and then spending time on the farm, we end up spending an awful lot of time selling vegetables door to door. Fascinated by people's selections and inspired by the deeds of Herbert Hoover to cure hunger after World War I, Wansink knew his mission in life. Nutrition and the role that it plays not just in our physical development but also in our social development, how we connect with our families and how we see ourselves has a ripple effect that goes way beyond simply eating five a day. He received a PhD in behavioral science at Stanford then went on to teach at Cornell University where he was recently sought out by the nation's top office. What the president is interested in and why I was appointed to this is that they're beginning to realize that it's not being able to pass a nutrition quiz that gets people to eat better. It's an understanding of behavior that gets people to eat better. Wansink was brought on board the USDA to revolutionize the way Americans think about eating and draft the 2010 Dietary Guidelines. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. This is the sort of thing that I dreamed about. I am not going to sleep until I've done everything I can to make it happen. Last piece. <clears throat> Most of what we eat and how much we eat is influenced by the things around us. That's the driving message behind Brian Wansink's new book, Mindless Eating. They end up being influenced by the size of the plate we happen to take from the cupboard. They end up being influenced by the distance we put the candy bowl away from us. They end up being influenced by whether we serve food family style or not family style. Whether it be the comfort foods we like or whether it be the lighting in the restaurant, all these things end up biasing us. Part of Wansing's work as the USDA's executive director of nutrition is to revamp the food pyramid and decide what Americans should be eating. But to get people to eat better, Wansing believes we must go beyond to understand why we make certain food choices. Most people believe that they know what they like. In reality, our taste is tremendously suggestive. Changing labels is one way Wansing says companies can get people to consider food they probably wouldn't otherwise. Take, for example, the words thick and creamy on this box of macaroni and cheese. Or even using descriptive words like famous or zesty to describe an entree on a menu. Wansing says being healthy means understanding these triggers and also staying away from that dreaded four-letter word, diet. If you're depriving yourself of something you love, whether it be French fries, or whether it be affection, or whether it be television, it's going to come back to bite you. The key, Wansing believes, is to make three small changes a day. Those could be as small as saying, okay, every morning I'm going to have some protein for breakfast. Or it could be as small as saying, I'm not going to have a snack unless I have a piece of fruit before I eat that snack. This is a Small steps to becoming a more mindful eater. This is actually the opening sentence and the closing sentence of the book. The best diet is the one you don't know you're on.